coming to you from the My Little Falls studio here in beautiful Little Falls, New York. It's your host, Scott Kinville, and another episode of Marty's Illegal Stick. <laughs> hey, what's up, hockey fans, and welcome to episode number 31 of Marty's Illegal Stick, and we're here on June 23rd, 2021. You know, when I was coming up with the outline, I realized we're on number 31, two names came to mind, and I'm, I'm going to hit you with you guys right off the bat. Billy Smith and Grant Fjord. First names that popped into my head. So I'm going to just give you a little food for thought, and I want you to think about it. Which one in their prime which would you rather have? And while you're thinking about that, I'm going to bring in the panel. Because we were just joking about that. So anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do you like that? <laughs> Good segue. Good segue. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so anyways, uh, no Gumper again this week. Uh Gumper is actually sick. He showed up at my house because, you know, he always rides over with me and he's coughing and hacking. I go, what's the matter with you? He's like, oh, I think I got a cold. I'm like, well, what are you doing here? You know, and he goes, well, I, I missed last week. I said, well, you're missing this week, too, because I don't want whatever it is, the disease you've got. And I'm sure Dave doesn't want it either. So no, don't want anything to do with it. So so Gumper's on IL this week. That's it. <laughs> So hopefully he'll be recovered for next week. But in the meantime, for my in-studio co-host, once again, pinch hinting for Gumper, is our producer, Dave the Save Warner. How are you, Dave? I'm great. You know, and the one thing I can do is, on the question of the week, I can keep his streak alive. I'm sure you can. <laughs> I'm sure you can. You're going to have to explain this to Mark. I'm going to, well, I'm going to, I'm keeping an eye on your phone is what I'm doing. So. <laughs> yeah. I have a habit, Mark, of looking up the question on my phone ahead yeah. of time and acting like I know hockey. That's okay. That's <laughs> it's just okay. going to be sneaky with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, anyways, uh, also joining us, as always, our regular co host, it is the professor himself, Mr. Jeremy Roberts. What's going on, Jeremy? Nothing much, Scotty. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And you know what? I, I tell you, I give you all the credit in the world, pal. You are Boy. such a sport. You've kept that sign on that wall. I, you know, I have to now. I have to. It's, it's, it's <laughs> legendary. It's ingrained <laughs> into this show. I, I, you know, I looked, I saw well, you it. Notice he, so I take he, it down. He, I'm like, nah, I'm not going to take it down. <laughs> I'm actually going to You notice sure what he did. He, perfect he, put, right he put the, Mark doesn't, he, Mark can't see what it is, but, you know, he put the light on it. It was on. It yeah, was off yeah. at first. Now he's put it, he, yep. he wants to highlight it. Yeah, so, I want to highlight it. Yeah, you know what though? Mark, you, it's you, the little things. Yeah. And we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, I can you, see you it. Roll, I like it. You roll with the punches yeah. so well, man. Yeah, you so I, much credit. I have to, you know. <laughs> I, I you know, it was a, it was a long weekend out in Buffalo for the Battle of Buffalo this weekend, so uh it was uh, it's time to enjoy the little things right now. Oh, you were in Buffalo, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. did you get the anchor bar? Uh did not. Did go to Duff's though. Oh, oh, hey, there you what, go. Dust, Dust was um, less than a block away from the arena that we play, we played at, and uh, I just could not go anywhere else. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm glad to hear it. You're making me proud, bud. Making me proud. <laughs> also joining us in a co-hosting capacity this time, we had so much fun the last time he was on the show, I asked him to come back and, and, and enjoy some more hockey fun with us. It's the one and the only Mr. Dom Real. Dom, what's happening? Oh, wow. I don't know if I can live up to that introduction, but I'll go ahead and take it. <laughs> 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 nothing, nothing. Thank you for having me. I think today is going to be a good one. Uh, this is one of my favorite guests of my show of all time, so I'm glad you asked me to join you. All right. Well, hey, I'm, I'm glad you're aboard for the ride, bud. So let's Absolutely. get going. Our guest this week is a, a Whitesboro High, High School hockey standout. Uh, made us incredibly proud from this area. Um, also a former NHLer, uh, played over in Europe, and he's also currently a scout for the Minnesota Wild. I want to bring in Mr. Mark Mowers. Mark, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it as well. It's uh, it's always good to, to talk hockey with some, you know, I can't say local folks anymore because I haven't, I haven't lived there, I guess, for a long time. But, Lucky uh, you. I know where I know where my roots I know where my roots were, and uh, they always will be. And I love talking hockey with you guys. You know, once a Central New Yorker, always a Central New Yorker. You'll never get it out of your blood. You got it. You got Good, it. Good, bad, or otherwise. That's right. That's right. I'll take it. Yeah. Right. There you go. So uh, obviously, like I just said, you uh, you pretty much started it off at uh, Whitesboro High School, um, and obviously, I'm sure you played youth hockey before that. So because we are the, the we call ourselves anyway the podcast of Central New York hockey, um, who were some of your bigger influences at that time, particular time? Oh man, I, you know. 
my parents obviously um they were a big part of it and mainly because they just gave me opportunity to play um they never pushed me to play they just i just always went out and had fun but there were there were a couple of coaches i had to um in youth hockey that actually i don't know they just they they pushed the right buttons and showed me the way and taught me the right way and I don't know. It just uh, ingrained like a, a desire to to play as long as I possibly could. And the the, the one the one coach that uh, that I, I have to mention his name is Chris Roller, and he used to he used to coach at Notre Dame High School, I believe. Uh, but he was my youth youth hockey coach, and um, he's had some health issues of late. But um, I definitely need to mention his name because he was a big influence um, as far as locally. I mean, if you're talking about you know NHL guys that that that, that I watched, you know that was. I was all Gretzky at that time, and um, he was a guy that uh, I mean, how could you not like him? But I know, you know right? Once, I think once he got to St. Louis, though, I was done chasing him. I, I changed. I think I changed favorite players. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't handle it anymore. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, he was only there for a few months, though. <laughs> I know, but come on, he buy all, all those stuff. sweaters. Were sick, though. Come on, LA and I mean, it's like, like chasing know. like a Joe Montana to Kate, Kansas City. So I mean, it's, you yeah. just can't do it. it. Just didn't fit. Didn't, yeah, it didn't fit, work. But. Didn't work. <laughs> I know, right? It was just it was just so weird seeing him with the blues. Yeah, I agree. You know, of, of all the teams, it's like, wait a minute, the blues? Huh? Mm-hmm. But you know, people don't realize just how good that blues team was that he went to. It was loaded. No, I it, know. it really was. And it's there's just re- uh, too too bad for them. They ran into the Detroit buzz saw. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a reason why he went there, right? He was trying to win and he, he went to a good team. It just just didn't work out. But like I said, I didn't even pay attension to him. So he was out. He was out. I picked someone new. I think it was pa- I went down to Pavel Bury. I think was my next guy. That I, that I okay. Wanted to, but. Not a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So just to, just to finish up with the the high school end of it. So I mean, obviously, high school hockey is pretty big around here. I mean, you know, everybody enjoys it. Mm-hmm. And so, any big rivalries you can uh, remember? Any particular players or teams or? Whitesboro now, I'm yeah. imagining you're probably going to say New Hartford, right? Yeah, it's a guarantee. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> as it, as I got to be a senior, uh, you know, I don't know if there's any New Hartford alums on here, but uh, New Hartford, you know, we took, care, we took care of them pretty easily, I think, my junior, senior year. So then it became Rome. <laughs> it became Rome. I think it was Rome Free Academy at that time. R- yep. RCH was – was gone maybe I, I don't know but uh but you're right I, you know through the years and um guys like scotty usmel and mark coteri those were two of my biggest rivals in clinton there was jeremy lapata he was a forward that could really skate and score so those are three names that come to mind but you're right new hartford was always um i don't want to say it was a bloodbath but there was definitely a lot of hatred and um those those buildings as, as small as they were i mean i i go back i've gone back and watched a few games of late and just I don't know, you know, as big as uh, you, uh, you know, high school hockey is or was in, in upstate New York, it seems like it's dipped a little bit. But those the times that I had back then, and that was one of the reasons I didn't leave, I didn't leave public high school to go play junior a year earlier, I think, because I enjoyed it so much and had good friends, and the atmosphere really was it was it was unbelievable. Did you have that option to to leave early if you wanted to? There was a there was a point after my junior year that I got approached by. I think I don't even know what it was at the time. I was just, I didn't even think about it, to be honest with you. I was, there was no way I was leaving my friends and there was no way I was leaving. High, it just wasn't an option. Um, and then after my senior year, I got invited to a couple camps and, and then one thing led to another, I ended up on a junior team uh, in Michigan. But um, for me, it wasn't an option at the time. I just, I, I think I've had this, this talk with Dom already about just, I wasn't thinking about college. I wasn't thinking about anything really. I just wanted to play high school hockey, and I was having a good time doing it. I, uh, it's actually interesting you bring that up, Mark. I'm just, good, just from talking to all the college kids that I've talked to, and maybe you've had a similar conversation or not. But you mentioned how there's kind of been a big dip, especially in the state of New York, when it comes to high school hockey. Do you think the emergence of how many juniors leagues that there are in America mm-hmm. now? Do you think that plays a factor? Because almost every college kid you talk to yeah. nowadays, they they just left high school yeah. and played juniors. Yeah, and New York's no, or uh, Massachusetts is no different than New York, and I think really the only state that's kind of hanging on a little bit, or for the most part, is Minnesota. Um, they still have it going pretty strong out there, but corporate America, corporate hockey is is infiltrating, and that's basically what's happened. It's all about the money, and and you know, I I get mad to be honest with you when I think about they're destroying that, they're destroying rivalries. I mean, their friends. 
they go play for these junior leagues, these junior teams, and they don't have people going to watch their games. Like it's, right. there's no, there's no pride. It's all about getting to the next level. And, and the parents, it's all about their investment, what they're putting into it and their expectations are, what am I getting back? And then it becomes, you know, then they're chasing teams all over the place and it's just, it's a disaster. And I, I don't know if it can ever go back. Um, right. I hope it does, but it's, it's out in Massachusetts. It's, it's the same way. And it, Frankly, it disgusts me because it just, it's all it is about is getting to the next level. And, and I don't know, for me, it was the wrong approach. We're, uh, we're missing out on that local, uh, Mowers Kateri rivalry, you know? Exactly. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh man. What a show that would have been for the local hockey fans. Good God. <laughs> oh man. You know, I should have asked him to come on. What was I thinking? Well, <laughs> we'll have to do it again. I was Maybe just going to say, we can arrange for that. Don't worry. If you got the time, I'm sure we can make the time. Don't worry about he'll, that. He'll be sure to squeak in how he still has the local scoring record. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure we'll hear, I'm sure we'll hear all about it as soon as he comes on, too. And there you go. There's your other There's your other um, uh, player for your, your uh, men's league game. So there you go. Each, each Ooh, team. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. oh, what a show. Yeah. Now so that get more people in there than ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> forget the no, forget about the uh, the no contact league. It would just go off yeah. contact real quick, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh man. Just turn your head. Just turn your head. It's okay. <laughs> These guys know what they're doing. They can do it. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. We so, are old, you know. We are getting older. It's not like we, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just to put it in perspective, I mean, I, I think you and I are the same age. I'm going to be 47 next month. And so I'm older than you. I'm older so, than you. But not by, not by much. Wow. Though. Yeah, I just turned in, in February. So. And you've yeah. got more hair than I got, so I'm really I, jealous. I was just going to say, he looks a lot younger than <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> this, this <laughs> comes like, I'm 67. What are you talking about? He, he looks like I a young I, I thought he was like 30 or something like that. <laughs> Jeez. Are you hitting on me? Are you hitting on me? No, <laughs> yeah. I am, buddy. <laughs> Old man, young man. Mark, Mark, serious question though. Mike. You uh, when you reached up to pretend like you were gonna pull out your hair, you kind of flashed a little biceps. So you hitting yeah. the gym a lot there, butter? I was on? looking at that, going, "Lamb, man, looking there good." He there he goes again. What's yeah, yeah, wow. another hit? Another hit. <laughs> it, it's it's going on coming, Scott. Jeez. I feel responsible for this. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's okay. I was gonna make a joke and just say I could pull the hair off, but uh, but anyway, no. It's, <laughs> I go in I go in phases and uh, right now I'm in a good phase of um, I, I mean I've, I've worked out my whole life but um, there's some downtime when I just get sick of it but uh, the last couple of months I don't know I've been going crazy and it's been routine in the morning and I feel good so good. hopefully that men's league game is coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're definitely gonna have to get a mark just, hold of mark now. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> So you got out of high school and you went to the the juniors. Obviously, it was the American junior teams like we were just talking about. And you yeah. did that for two years, I believe. Yep. And then you went to the University of New Hampshire. Uh, a question because, I mean, I, I obviously you see like with uh, like baseball, I'm going to start uh, basketball, football. You know, a lot of players will come out of high school and go right to college. Yeah. Yep. So explain that, how you went to the junior first and then ended up going to college. Um, so back then it was, what was it? 92 that I graduated. It's a little different than it was, than it is now. Um, mm -hmm. but real, so back then you could use it as a stepping stone basically to get into college. And, and, and once again, even when I went to Saginaw, Michigan for my first junior team, like I was just going to extend my career really, or whatever you want to call it. I just wanted to play as long as I could. And people were like, just go play. You never know what's going to happen. Um, but nowadays jump nowadays, kids are kids are accepting scholarships at 16, 17. And now they use that, those junior leagues more often than not um, is like development years. So you'll already be committed to a college and they'll use these as years to get stronger and, and hopefully get better. And then you jump to college when you're 20. So, but back to, you know, what I did, I went to Saginaw, um, had a good year, surprisingly, I guess, to, to many. And at the end of the year, I had one offer, I think to go to Ferris state, on a like a two year two out of four scholarship so, something like that and um so at that and then i had agents calling me and this and that and um you know they were like don't accept that like you got another year so that then i went over to dubuque and played another year and then things just kind of exploded and, and from there like like i developed late i physically developed late and and everything kind of just fell into place so um two months into that year i think i had 
you know, 10 or 12 schools reaching out and I picked four or five to go visit. And um, I loved UNH and that's the end of the story as, as far as that's concerned, the, the junior part of it. So what was it in particular about UNH that you loved? Uh, well, I, I, you know what? I, I went to North Dakota, Minnesota, Duluth. I went to Providence, Bowling Green and UNH. And in my mind, I, I wanted to come back east just so my parents could see me play more often. And um, so it kind of eliminated those other schools. But Minnesota, Duluth, I, I absolutely love, to be honest. Um, but as far as UNH, I don't, it's, I think being close to the ocean and just having water and you take a, you take this small little bridge to get over from Portsmouth, New Hampshire, kind mm -hmm. of going into Durham, New Hampshire. And it just had the old school, the brick buildings. And I, it just, I don't know, small, it's big. It was a big school as far as students, like 12,000, but it's, it felt like a small little college town. And, and for me, it just, it was the, it was a, it was a great decision then, and it was when I was there too. And after I left, no regrets at all. It just was a perfect fit. Wow, and that's beautiful country out there too. Yeah, it really is, especially in the fall. For sure, for sure, absolutely. <laughs> and they were getting a new, you no know, part of it too. They were getting a new arena that wasn't going to be done the first year. So my freshman year, I had to play in this small little um, like youth hockey rink, kind of like JFK in Rome, really. And uh, so it was a little sacrifice there, but I knew the new rink was coming in for my sophomore year and. And it was uh, it was quite the experience the first year, so it was great. Yeah, it was like that catch up. Good things come to those who wait, right? There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's the little things. It's the little yeah. things. Oh, 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 bam! bam. Wonder right, right now. I love it. Yeah, yeah, right. I That's love awesome. it. That's oh, awesome. Oh man. <laughs> Uh, oh, no, yeah. you had Dale's a gonna, Dale's gonna catch it for that one. So, but you had a fantastic career at UNH. You were a rookie of the year for Hockey East, and I believe it was 1995, correct? Yep. yep. And then you were a, a finalist for the Hobie Baker Award in '98. So, once that was all done, you're probably, I'm sure, looking at the NHL, thinking that, you know. Yeah. I mean, once again, I mean, that kind of goes without saying, right? I mean, yeah, that's... like even though I had agents like calling me a little bit early on when I was in junior, I never really signed out with anybody and nobody really showed a ton of interest. And um, even when I went to school, I kind of, you know, I went with the same mentality that I, would, I just wanted to go and play. And and like you said, things just kind of they just kind of happen. You know, I had a great I had a great uh, freshman season, get a rookie of the year. Um, then I start getting a few calls from some agents, but even still nothing, I guess point being, I said, I, even after my freshman, sophomore year, I just, I still thought I was just going to play college hockey. I was not thinking about professional hockey one bit. Um, it wasn't until my junior year where that's where I was getting a little more pressure from agents and, and, uh, to sign with them. And they're like, listen, you're going to be able to play pro hockey at some point. And, and, um, so that were, then it kind of came into my mind and maybe a little bit after my junior year, there was some chatter that I could leave. But once again, it, it kind of reminded me as when I was with Whitesboro that like, it wasn't, I wasn't entertaining it to be honest, because it, you know, at UNH and at the college atmosphere, like all I wanted to do was win. I wanted to win so bad. They've never won a they've never won a title there, and we got we got close my senior year, but you know we didn't we didn't get it done. But point being, I I was going to play the thing out anyways, even though I was an older I guess an older rookie going into pro hockey at 24. It didn't really bother me one bit. I just um, I wanted to win, and we had a good chance of winning my senior year, so went back and gave it a good shot. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, because that's I, that was kind of what I was leading into. Were you actually after being a finalist for the Hobie Baker? Were you surprised that you weren't drafted? Uh, not really, because uh, you know, back to your original comment about like how other sports they get drafted, you know, when they're seventeen or you know, or they get drafted after uh, they're done playing, right? In college, a lot of them. Sorry, not seventeen. They get drafted when they're twenty-one, twenty-two. Where hockey is different. You get drafted when you're. 17 18 sometimes 19 so it's a completely different time frame and it's a different way of a lot of kids don't turn pro till they're 20 21 so to answer your question i was you know i was five foot nothing 130 nothing you know so i when i was 17 years old i didn't have a chance you know, i didn't have a prayer of getting drafted so it wasn't even something i looked back and it was disappointed about like it wasn't I wasn't thinking about it at the time, and and looking back, there I wasn't supposed to be drafted at that time. I just developed late and, and was able to have a career out of it um, as a free agent. 
Well, that's cool, though, because, I mean, that you did end up getting signed by Nashville. Was there any other teams that were in the mix for your services at that particular time? Yeah, so it was, it was Edmonton and Nashville were the two teams that I kind of had to pick between. And, um, you know, once again, I never look back and regret making decisions and things happen for a reason. Uh, if I maybe if I had to do it over again, I, I probably would have went the Edmonton route. Um, only <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, 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 you, you know, can't, because you I, can't tell what he was thinking. Well, I'm thinking, this is what I'm thinking. <laughs> this is me. If I was a young Mark Myers, I just figured like you're on a Bogretsky fan, especially, you know, yeah. this is only granted. He wasn't there anymore, but it's like not far removed from the Gretzky Oilers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for me, but that's just my impulsive. I'm an impulsive. You're much more uh, relaxed and intelligent than I am. So no. <laughs> I wish. The funniest part was watching Dow. I couldn't tell if he had to sneeze or his head was going to explode. Out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the first time I had you on, cause I was pretty sure I, cause I remember thinking, I was like, you know, this, when you were like, when you were younger, I figured you were an Oilers fan. So I think I wore my McDavid jersey when I had you on the podcast. Yeah, you I did. Can't remember. You yeah, did. Yeah. You, did. So. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I wish, you know, I wish I would have went with my heart. But in the end, I, I was, it was, for me, it was more about opportunity. And I was. Got thinking, to play for Barry Trotz. You know, I was, yeah. And it was the first year, yeah. the expansion team, right? So I'm like, how much better could it be for opportunity than going to an expansion team? They have no, you know, they're getting players from a draft, but there are a lot of players the teams don't want and they're maybe at the end of their career. So that was how I based it off of. Um, now looking back, Edmonton actually gave college kids from 98 until 2008, like tons of opportunity, tons of opportunity. So that's why I was talking about like if I maybe would have done a little more research about, you know, college kids in, in Edmonton, and maybe it would have swayed me the other way, but that was actually my agent's job. It, my agent's job, so he screwed up. But uh, <laughs> hey, Nashville's an unreal town, though, so it must have been a blast down there. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it right at that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was just gonna say the winters are gonna be a lot better there anyway. <laughs> yeah, oh man, <laughs> the winters, the springs, the summers doesn't matter. If you haven't been there, you got it. <laughs> You got to put awesome. it on the bucket list because it's a place, you know, it's kind of like Vegas of the East right now, to be honest. It's uh, right. It is really, it is booming. I wish I would have bought a condo when I was down there, whatever, 15, 20 years ago, because it's, you can't get a place down there now, but it's, yeah. what a town, what a town. <laughs> it's awesome. So I've heard, and just out of curiosity, because you've mentioned your agent, who was your agent? His name is Kurt Overhart. Okay. Yeah. And the only reason yeah. I ask is we had Tom Laidlaw on and he was a player agent. So yeah. I was just kind of wondering if that was there was a connection there. I was just no, I, yeah. I yeah. met Tom. I just met Tom uh, maybe two summers ago. We did a charity game, uh, like a Bruins alumni versus a Rangers alumni, and he played in it. We had a good time and had a few beers after. What a good guy. Good guy. <laughs> He's so, awesome. I mean, he was he yeah. was on. What a what a what a character. Yeah. Yeah. He, he really is. And he know? and he did the uh he was on the uh what's it called? The uh the show where they got to go survive. Yes, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> the show where they got to survive. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Called the uh, Baton yeah. Death March. So. Yeah. 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 There you go. Don't worry. Dave, the same is going to be on the next season of Survivor. You yeah. want to say? Yeah. yeah. If I survive this season with you, I'll be on there. I'm just uh, trying to warm you up. That's yeah, all. Yeah. Good so, stuff. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nope. You're good. Oh. I was just waiting for Dave to come in with another comment. That was a <laughs> no, no, no more puck crack. I got to get him. Got to get him under control over here. Yep. <laughs> so you were with uh, Nashville for about four seasons, right? And you you split time between them and Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee started off with the IHL, and then they went to the AHL when you were there as well, right? Yep. Yeah. So I mean, pretty much for four years, there was only one stretch. I don't even, I think it was maybe the third year that I got an apartment in Nashville for the last maybe three or four months or something, but mostly it was up, down, up, down. I think my first two years, I, I, I want to say I got recalled and sent back down like 40 times. It was crazy. It was just, it, I didn't mind it because I was got to play in the NHL, but looking back, it's like, geez, can you just like, you know? So anyways, it was, um, you know, I dreaded actually going to Milwaukee. I, I, I always thought Laverne and Shirley, I thought it was going to be this grungy <laughs> town, but uh, <laughs> Milwaukee was actually great. It really was a good city. It's got a river that runs through it. Some, a lot of cool little pubs and um, it was a great, it really was a great town. And, and um, I've hit on this with some other conversations that I've had too, but playing in the minors, it's a completely different thing than the NHL. And when it's over, you realize it, but there's there's things you get to do differently you, you bond more you you um i don't know there's more parties and stuff with families and with the guys it's just uh 
when you go when you're in the NHL, it's just it is so much all business and in getting the next W. You know, every single time you you know you play a game. So not that you're not trying to win in the minors, but it's just a different it's just a different feeling. And you the, the guys that I speak with now to this day, most of those are guys that I played with in Grand Rapids and played in Milwaukee. We've we've kept in touch. We do fantasy you know baseball, fantasy football. So. Um, I, had, I had a good time. And, you know, Nashville obviously was great. Gave me an opportunity to get my foot in the door. And um, but Milwaukee was really. I look back and a lot of great memories there. You know, we had uh, Dale Perrington on. He played for the Rangers right about the same time that you were in Nashville, and he had actually made. And he's the one actually responsible for the, it's the little things. <laughs> we never noticed that the first time he was on. He's like that was like the first words out of his mouth. It was awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> It was it was so great watching Jeremy blush. But anyways, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> but he actually said that it's actually harder to play in the AHL than the NHL. Is there? You think that's there's 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 truth to it. Um, okay, so the truth I would say is it's harder is because it's more it's more helter skelter. Like there's less organization right. because there's guys out there that are trying to run you over. There's guys out there trying to you know put a fist through your face. Like, so it's harder in that sense where it's more chaos. You go to the NHL guys are in the right position guys. You, you put your stick out on the ice from 20 feet, the puck hits your tape. Like, you know what I mean? There's just more, there's just more skill. There's more structure to it. Um, sure. Now the flip side of it for me, I played in the NHL and I felt like I was always on pins and needles. I always felt like if I made a mistake, I wasn't going to see the ice again. Um, so when I would go back to the minors, it was a huge relief and I would just go out and I just felt like I owned I owned every shift that I, not every shift, but like, you know, I felt very, I just felt confident. I felt confident in myself. I, I did things that I've done my whole life. Um, but then when I go back up, it was just, I just never had that really had never had that same feeling, especially with the puck on my stick that, it, you know, it was my puck and it was going to be, I was going to dictate what was going to happen out here. So Kind of goes both ways, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it does, oh, because yeah. that's exactly what Dal said. He goes, you know, in the NHL, you got systems in place, and there's the much more structure. Whereas when, you know, down to the AHL, and he said, especially if you're coming down to the AHL from the NHL, there are guys there that think that they got to prove something by going after the guy who played in the NHL, and they want to try oh, to make a name for themselves. There's a target. Yeah, there's a yeah. target. On not, the not even just on the other team, on his team. Guys yeah. are seeing Mark come down. Right. They're hoping he blows out his ACL so they get a yeah. chance to get on the power play. Right. Yep. It's, right. Absolutely, it's absolutely true. Even the wives. Even the wives are fighting up in the stands with each other because <laughs> <laughs> one, you know, it, one husband gets pulled up before the other. Definitely uh, shows too, Mark. I mean, your numbers when you're down were fantastic. Like I'm looking at them right now. You're a couple seasons. You're a point per game player in Milwaukee. You're, you're having yeah. a great year. So I feel like I was kind of more or less going to bring that into. I guess is it more of like a mental thing? Like, granted, the 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 level of competition isn't the same, but you know, you're not. You stand. Yeah, yeah, you know where you stand. Thank you, Jeremy. Like you know, it's not like as much of pressure, I guess, in the NHL. Cause I feel like just the overwhelming, like, Oh my God, I'm in the NHL. My name's on an NHL Jersey. Like this. Is yeah, <laughs> no. And it's true. And that's kind of what I went through. And I wish, you know, but on the flip side of that, just, you know, if I did have the same confidence, it doesn't mean that I was going to be a point per game guy in the NHL either. You know, I just, I just wish, I wish I could have gone back in time because I don't really know at this point, like, you know, it's I'm 47 and I don't really know how it could have ended up if I would have, either just had that self-confidence or I had a coach in the very beginning that just said, listen, come up and do what you do, you know, because as good as Barry Trotz is now, and he, and he was great back then, but he's learned a lot. And I think, you know, communicating with, with young players has changed a lot than it was back in 98 and 2000. I, I know it has, you know? Um, so it's just, sometimes I think about it and other times I'm like, you know what? It doesn't really matter. You still played 275 games and it's, you know, it was a, it was a great career, but when this conversation comes up, it's always, it does cross my mind. Like I, you know, you just don't know. I might still not have been good enough to, to produce at that level, but you just don't know if you don't have the self-confidence. So it's never, you just, and I, I tell kids that all the time now, even, even in the scouting world, if I get to talk to kids that are in Iowa playing in the minors, I'm like, listen, just keep the same attitude when you go up because you'll, you have to, or you'll, you, you'll turn into a five minute a night checker. 
<laughs> 277 Deco. to be specific. Stack that down. De- you know, that goes all the way down to that goes all the way down to mite level hockey. Just tell them to keep their confidence. I mean, when I coach yeah. these little these, these little mites that I coach, and yes. you know, we'll go out and we'll smoke a team, and then I'm you know, and then the team will come out and like, oh, these guys are big, and I'm like, I go, just go out and do what you do. Yeah, just, yeah. Just you've already it. you've already lost if you're looking at a big yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Yep, that's good. I like it. I like it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, for so, sure. So uh, after Nashville, you ended up with Detroit. Now, I know Don's got something he wants to throw in there. So <laughs> I'll let him run with it first, and then I'll finish my thought. No, I mean, I just – I brought it up Don. with you before, and I brought it up before we got on, this, on the show. And that's just – it still baffles me to this day because I'm a big stack guy, and I look at, like, Hockey DB. I still don't understand how a team that had Cujo – and Hashik doesn't win a cup. I just don't get it. Yeah, <laughs> trust me. Especially the way the league is now. You're just you're just like twisting that knife right right in his back. There we go. Yeah, yeah. There we go. I know. Okay. Point up at the trophies. Just point those up. The, <laughs> yeah. So those are the two trophies from that year. I mean, we I, we blew away the league as far as you know the president's trophy and most most points. And um, I'm with you. I, you know, once again, it's just and you're but you're seeing it this year too. Like you 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 run into a team that has some mojo and a good goalie and look at Montreal right now. I mean, right, it, I mean, exactly. Right. right if they didn't make, sure. they shouldn't have made the playoff. If it was a normal year, they wouldn't have made the playoffs in the, in the East or whatever with the Bruins division there. And, and all the GM would have been fired. The coach, you know, yep. would, they would have clean house. Right. But yep. they find a little right. mojo. They're playing with confidence. They're playing fast and carry prices back and look what you got. So we, it's what, kind of what happened to us. We just Calgary the one year and Edmonton the next year with the, Dwayne Rollison, I think, was the goalie in Edmonton, and mm-hmm. oh, that's right. It's just yeah. the way it's the way it goes. I mean, it's trust me. That's why coaches lose their jobs, you know. But you know what else I wanted to ask you? I didn't have a chance to the last time because I this. If you guys haven't looked at this team that he was on, it was unbelievable. I suggest you check it out. <laughs> oh yeah. So I know, obviously, guys in practice and guys in games are a little different, but I hockey gets a little heated, especially back then. Did Cronwall ever undress anyone on his own team? Like, did you ever see him just lay the bricks to somebody? No, <laughs> no, he never would. I he would never figure yeah. that. <laughs> he's just, uh, he's he's such a good guy. He has too much respect for for people, especially teammates. Sense. He would, uh, yes. yeah, because he would, you know, he could hurt you too. Like, he'd, yeah, you know, that's yeah, right. Yeah. So he's not going to put out one of his, you know, one of his teammates on the on the IR. So that then that tells you kind of what kind of kid he was too. He wasn't. I would say I would have that in the back of my mind if I was out there handling the puck. <laughs> <laughs> you guys like the ultimate warrior on the yeah. ice, you know what I mean? Oh, head man. down, head down, head down, coming across the blue line. See you later. <laughs> Unbelievable! Unbelievable! I mean, the Which weapons you-, you guys had on that team practice must have been a blast. It was. I mean, that, well, the first year we had Dave Lewis. Then we had the the lockout came, which which stunk for me. But um, and then Babcock came in, which I don't know. Did we talk about him a little bit? <laughs> no, I don't think we did. <laughs> so practices we're weren't as, they weren't as enjoyable when he got behind the bench. But uh, anyway, that's. But no, they were. They, they, it was fun. It was fun to be able to to play against and play with these guys in practice and and obviously in the games as well. But man. So I got a question for you. Was there any reports at all of Brett Hall and Dominic Hasek having words once they got on the same team? Because if you recall, there was a little controversy in 1999. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they took. I'm sure they took care. <laughs> that had of been an odd moment. <laughs> but it, in the end, in the end, it wasn't either of their prowl. It was the league who right. screwed it right. up. You know? so, how bad? Oh, you know, I mean, I'm sure Dom, you know, wakes up every night or. You know, most nights, like I would, Jesus. Yeah. But uh, it was in the end, it wasn't Brett Hull's. You know, it wasn't really his thing. The, the league blew that all year long. And oh, absolutely! And that was such a stupid rule, anyway. Oh, it, it really was. was. It, it shouldn't have been a rule in the first place. But for it to, you know, come into play for the game winner for the Stanley Cup, my God. Yeah. How do you think the rules committee <laughs> felt when it came down to those like triple overtime or something like that, and then that? Yeah, the I would just. It's kind of was on that committee. To- yeah, if I was on that committee, I would have moved. I would have gone to the bar. Oh yeah, and get the hell out of there forever. Yeah, yeah. It's like going out on an all night bender and not remembering what you did the next day, and they're like sheepishly oh. looking at your phone, right? <laughs> I don't know. Do I've never do? done that. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Nashville being it, the yeah, East I was just Coast Vegas. Say, you were in Nashville. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and even rock. at the time, Detroit was popping back then. Because I, I don't know how we didn't. I didn't ask you about the combination of Hully and Babcock. That must have been unreal. 
Oh, oh yeah. Oh, you know, but the, the, yeah, the difference was that, that, that Brett would have just been like, go screw yourself. You know, like he doesn't, he didn't have to deal with it, but there were some guys like myself that had to, you know, so <laughs> another, yeah, just another regret that I have, you know, just not tell him to, to, to shut the F up. I, I, I wish I would have, cause I think he would have leave me alone, you know, or left me alone yeah. if, uh, if I would have stood up to him a little bit, but man, he was a jerk. He was a jerk. Really? <laughs> you know, that shows now he's on TV. I was gonna say he's yeah, on TV right? now, and you know he's like yeah. he says he's ever, trying. He wants to get back into the TV the NHL, So you're watching. He's yeah. just so stiff on TV. He's just like it's like a oh, robot. Yeah. You, you know? can tell he is. He's he. You know he doesn't want to like. He, he can just probably fly off the cuff. Well, yeah, like, he's got lose, enough heat the last couple months. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's, he's he can just you know he can just lose it on something. <laughs> I've, I've laid. I've kind of laid low when I've been asked these questions about him on these podcasts, but. I'm just telling. I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna let it out completely. But he's the biggest fraud. He's the biggest <laughs> fraud coach in the history of NHL coaches. Wow! Wow! He is. Oh, wow! He's the, <laughs> what you're seeing right now. What you're seeing right now. He plays. He plays it off like he's this guru. He he has the media in the palm of his hand. Like he's he's used them from day one to get right. where he needed to go, and it worked. Right. And I'm telling you, he's the most. He's the most over for me, and not only because he 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 beat me down like to a pulp, but he's the he's the most overrated coach too for me in the history of the, oh, in yeah. the NHL. Like of, of high profile yeah. coaches, you look you look at what he's done and what he's won. He's won the Olympics once or twice, but I mean, Dom, you could have coached that team and won the Olympics, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, let's team, yeah, yeah. Let's. right. Well, most, and he won one cup. He won one, he won cup. one, one cup. And all those years in Detroit, which I don't know how many years it was, six, seven. And then Uh, Toronto was another six, seven. Like he's, I'm, anyway, I'm not going to go into it too much. (laughs) (laughs) Seems like he's gone pretty deep already. (laughs) You're struck a nerve. He got blood pressure up here. That's a, Oh, that'll blow, blow this shot. Just, this wait, show just wait till we get farther into this. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah. So let's delve a little deeper. Forget the commercials yeah. and everything else. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a good time to bring up Sean Avery. Oh, I yeah. love Sean oh. Avery. Oh man. Uh, love Sean Avery. Even well, though he's since a, you did he's mention that, <laughs> no, that's farther down the line. We're still in Detroit here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to bring up Tom Wilson. No, no, no. 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 Well, we'll uh, say Jeremy like I from said, that. I like Tom Wilson if he was on my team. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. And if he was Big on shot. my team, I would love him. Yeah. You Other would. than that, he's a dirtbag. Yeah. <laughs> I love Tom Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> it's a love hate relationship for the guy. I, I just, yeah. I, I love him. I would love him on my team. I hate him not on my team. <laughs> Sean, Sean Avery was kind of the same. Like, you, you, you want him on your team. But you know, yeah. you, you'd hate him if he's not on your team, but I hated him and he was on my team. So <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine why. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's a bad team. He was he was I could count on one hand and not even use all my fingers of how many bad guys there were on the in the NHL that I played with. And he's one of those fingers. I was, I was be wondering, the you know, the one, right? Which, which one? Is he, is he really that flamboyant and that like well he's changed he's changed now, like he's for me, he's an attention getter type oh, guy yeah. now. So yeah. like, he, like the rumors and everything of what he is now, and and what he he's into fashion and whatever he is, I'm not I'm not gonna say. I don't even know what you can say anymore without getting in trouble. <laughs> so I'm not gonna I'm gonna stop right here. But uh, he was not like that as a player. He was he was he was he was another jerk. He was a, he was he an was ass. A, yeah, he, he was, was an in ass. the locker room. He treated people like shit and from. From his teammates to his trainers, and you know he's one of those guys that would, you know, I don't know, just throw his towels on the ground instead of throwing it five feet into the the, the basket or something. Just one of those guys to make people clean up after. Whoop, we lost him. Where'd he go? Right, we lost he'll him. be back. He'll, 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 he'll be, be back. back. Yeah, yeah back. Back. I don't know what what happens. It's like the internet here sucks or something. Yeah, yeah. It's so, like so, we talk about Tom Wilson yeah. dropped off. Yeah, as soon as Tom Wilson comes up, he's gone. <laughs> I know. It, it, didn't it happen last week too? It did. It did. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, that was you. You played with him in Grand Rapids, right? It was Grand yeah. Rapids. So down, even even being down a level, did his personality on the ice where he felt like he was the best player on the ice kind of shine through? Or did that kind of come out more when he was at the pro level? Because I remember watching him when he was with the Rangers and you could tell he thought he was the best player out there. Whether he was or yeah. not is irrelevant. But I don't think he- Yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> maybe a little bit. But I think he was more, 
He was he was just trying to get back to the NHL when he was in the right. minors. So he was he yeah. played like a rat. And to be I, I played with him on my line quite a bit, and it was we were great. Like it was he's great to have on your line. He just um, it was more off the ice where I just couldn't deal with him. But um, <laughs> but no, I think that did come out. That whole like playing that role and like limelight type thing yeah. that did come out in the NHL level, and you know what? It worked. It did work. You know, people sure. hated him. People well, I mean, look, play look, at, him. look at what he did with Brodeur. Exactly. Oh, I mean, right. he, he, he did that whole dance in front of Bordeaux. Yeah. That was what four minutes. He literally stood in front of him, right. you know? right. and he didn't so. even shake his hand in the cut in the end of the mm -hmm. series. So, yeah. I mean, that's just but the thing that is, just shows shows you what he really what he really is. Yeah, and, yeah. but the thing is too, you, you didn't forget his name, right? No, I mean, no. I mean, for all the wrong reasons, of course, but right, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Like, I'll, I'll defend him on the ice in that. Like, sometimes he crossed the lines. Like Brad Marchand, you know, sometimes he created right. you know, not as much lately, but he, he was effective. Like, he got in people's heads. Yeah. And even that Brodeur thing, like, there was, as far as I knew, there was no rule against you couldn't do that. Like, no, so he, he, just, he wasn't touching him. So, I mean, right, he, he did legal. what, you know, and I've actually thought about doing that myself. I don't have the guts to do it, but like, <laughs> he's like, I wish I did that. <laughs> like, why With not? Mark just... Maurer's rule. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the rule would come in right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it made sense. Like, turn around and completely take, you know, you might take a shot in the back or something, but, but who, you know, he did, he did what he had to do and he was an effective player. I still can't believe somebody from the Devils didn't come over and drill him when he was doing that to Bordeaux. You know, I'm amazed I, at that. And that's what I mean. Like he stood there for minutes yeah. in front of Bordeaux's face as the play yeah. is going on. Like, and nobody, like, you know, I mean, we, and it's not know. like the Devils didn't have any tough guys. That's what I mean. Like nobody cleared the crease for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, just clear the but crease. He, yeah, but he didn't touch him though. You know, no, he, he never right. touched him. Never he didn't touched touch him. him. So I don't know. Unreal. It's it is weird. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But on to on a better topic, or not on a more lighter topics, I guess. Um, <laughs> so the lockout does happen, and you you do go to Europe for that year. How did that come about? Uh, what I'm trying to think what happened. I stuck around until mid December, maybe, and then because we never knew what was going to happen, we thought right. there was a chance we we're going to come back. And uh, I believe my wife was pregnant too, so I was like, oh god, like what am I going to do? Some guys were playing the American League. And then finally, it just it just came to a point where we were like, you got to play. So I got a hold of my agent and, and I went over there and um, I went to Sweden. I signed in Sweden for a month on the worst team in the league. And I was excited, but it was a it was a tough experience. I think we I was there for nine games. We went one in nine, one in eight, something like that. Um, so they let me go pretty quickly at the end of that at the end of that month. Because when you're when you're a, an American or an import, I should say any import from any other country, you're expected to go there and either turn things around or score goals every single night. And, um, it was a tough adjustment for me. Um, but fortunately enough, I was able to go to Switzerland and finish the season um, also on a bad team. Uh, but in, in Switzerland, they were, they were, uh, the season was ending. I think there was two games left. Uh, the team I played for was uh, Freiburg and they already knew that they were going to be in the relegation round. So the, the four teams that go to the relegation round now, you know, you're battling to not be the worst team. So, <laughs> Because if you're the worst team, then you got to play the best team in the B League, and if you lose that series, then you drop to the B League the next season. So, I, I didn't know this at the time, but Freeburg was definitely nervous that they were going to get relegated to the B League, and uh, myself and uh, Trevor Litowski came in there, and um, we just had an unbelievable stretch of I don't know what it was, six, seven games, and we I don't know we might have had two points a game or something like that and we and we were like heroes we were we were absolute <laughs> heroes in this town because we kept the team in the a-league uh for the next uh for the next season so it was bizarre it was bizarre but didn't buy a drink didn't buy dinner didn't buy anything it was all paid for it was crazy it was crazy so you know, i even came home for the birth of my first daughter um and they were like what you leave you know because i had missed one game i think and <laughs> But then I they and they were afraid I wasn't going to go back, and uh, I ended up going back, and we won the next two games or something, and it was just it was bizarre. Did they make but any it, collateral so you would come back? I mean, <laughs> it was crazy. It really was crazy. everything I mean, still in your apartment. There you go. Okay, I think you know. I get I get where they're coming from because they live and die. A lot of people don't know this either. Like you think Switzerland, maybe soccer, maybe just skiing or whatever, but they're diehard fans over there, and it's. They are they're nuts. Like the atmosphere in those games is more like, more like or better than college atmospheres here. 
It's cra- they're crazy. Yeah, the fireworks the going on. Really, it's, it's nuts. So, so this tee that teed me up. Having that great experience there teed me up for when my career was over here with Anaheim. When Anaheim waved me, I, I had a I had an avenue to uh, call back over there to that that team and and kind of finish things up over there. You know, that's interesting you say that, too, because, I mean, it, it, you did play three more years in Europe after your NHL time was over. And I was looking today at some pictures of you when you were over there in Europe. Those uniforms are insane. <laughs> well, yeah. that's got to be so confusing. <laughs> well, get used to it, because guess what? Yeah, that's what's going to happen over here. Yeah, yeah I know, coming. unfortunately. Because yeah, I said so. that, you know, the, the helmet stickers was going to be only a one-year thing, and that's already no, – that's a, they're that's already gonna, signing on. Yeah. That's going so, – You know, that's, it's that's too much it's Too much money for them to not do it. I mean – Yeah. It's just it's going to happen, and you know everybody will get used to it, and it, whatever we move. And you on. see it on the ice now. I mean, now you're starting to see more and more ice logos yeah. on the ice. So I mean, it's, yeah. it's only long, it's only a short type period of time until you start seeing it on the uniforms. So that's right. Yep. But but you know what is, though, I can I can still whine about it. Yeah, you can. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can still do that. Yep. And you should. And you should. Yeah. The tradi- traditionalist, uh, which you know, I I I am too. Like I I. I like watching videos of the 70, you know, the 1970 Bruins and the Oilers and stuff like that and see how pure the game was. And I'm not completely happy of where the game is right now with taking the, yeah. taking all the toughness out and whatever. But anyway, I'm with you. I'm not, I'm not happy things are evolving either, but, um, but that's why no, we have we, these shows. That's why we have these shows to come yeah. out and bitch about it. That's right. That's right. That's right. I, think, I think the game's going to be a little bit way too ticky tacky right now. Whereas, you know, I mean, you, you, you blink at a guy wrong and they're going to call a penalty. Oh, right you don't on. like the officiating uh, in the Vegas Montreal series? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> you know, I'm going to bring that up a little bit later on, but I think I was honestly, I think that's more of a byproduct of where we've gone. Yeah. Really? You, you, they, they, I understand a lot of it's in the name of safety, but they've overregulated the game and you can overregulate to the point where you, you've ruined it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Bra- did Braden Point get anything? I don't think no. he did. A point, point five thousand. He had five thousand dollar fine, which is a joke. Just the max, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so that's all he got for that, which was basically the same cross check Buchnevich laid yeah. on, yeah. Um, the capital there, and he got a game. It's, a, it's, it's the, same, the same, same. It's been happening forever. It, it, they have right. videotape of exact same things that happened to goalies, like goalie interference, all this stuff, and then there's just no. And the playoffs are different than the regular season, and so it's just. It's the same. It's always been. It's almost. We just never get used to it. We just because we th- we expect it to be somewhat perfect or somewhat like consistent, and it's yeah, never. I, I don't know. It just won't be. You know, it's I think crazy. the thing that people have to accept is that hockey is a physical contact sport, and regardless of how many rules and how many regulations you put in, there are still going to be times when, you know, it might seem a little overly violent to the person who doesn't watch all the time. But for anybody who's played or watched for a long time, this really isn't too much different than what's been going on, like you said, Mark, for ages. Right. It's just, right. It, but to me, I get nervous because it's, ha- it's, you know, it's less and less. You know, they're making rules for, you know, um, who was it? Jake Evans from Montreal. I bring this one up because everybody asked me about this one. He comes around the net to, to get the, the, the two goal lead, right, for the empty netter. I don't know. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. with the uh, yep, yeah. And, yep. and Shifley comes back and blows him up, right? Like, I wouldn't even say they suspended him because it hit his head. Like it was almost impossible not to hit his head. But point being is if I, whenever I take the puck and try to wrap it around, whether it's in a tight area where there's people all around or in a situation like that, you know, there's a good chance that someone's going to, going to kill you. Right. So exactly. I completely disagreed with that call. Was it, was it uh, brutal? Was it predatory in some way? Not predatory, you know, no, like, cause he's, he, oh, glided, he glided into it. He didn't take like, a full, uh, no, that's it. it. He glided you know, into that head. Yeah, exactly. So, and and people keep saying, "Well, he could have played the puck." Well, where Evans had the puck. the puck. If Shifley plays the puck, he's probably going to knock it in the net. So, or or he's going to get the penalty shot because he's going to knock right. the net off. Yeah. No. So so that for me, that's a perfect example of where the game's going, and that's and I don't like it. You know, you have to have responsibility of what you're doing out there with the puck. Like mm-hmm. it's you know, like right. I would be so mad at myself when I got stretched into the <laughs> into the ambulance that I, you know what I mean? Like I was the one, but at the same time, you know what? I did what it I did what it took to put the game away too. So right, maybe right. you know maybe that in his in his mind he was like, you know what? I don't care what's going to happen to me. I'm tucking this thing in, and we're going to get the W. Yeah, you know. And unfortunately, he got killed. Yeah. But what are you going to railroaded? 
Did you ever you know, get lit up like that, Mark? By the way, I, I did, and that's kind of why I bring it. I bring it back to that point where it's your responsibility. It happened to me crossing the blue line. I was in the minors, I think Milwaukee, and it was in Rochester, I think, and I got I got destroyed. But guess what? It was my own fault. Like the guy, you know, he probably hit me square right in the head to start, but I buried my head coming over the blue line, got killed. There was no penalty. I wasn't mad. I wasn't looking for the coach to call the league and ask for a suspension. Like I was so mad at myself. Right. So put your head down. You knew you knew where you were going. You yes. You did. Yeah. And it's my fault that I yeah. just did what I did. Right. right. Exactly. So, uh, and you know, man. I'll tell you what. I mean, and, and Jeremy, I'm sorry to bring up a sore subject again, but I honestly think that a lot of that was a knee jerk reaction to the, all the crap that the league got because they didn't suspend Tom Wilson with that our time incident. Well, he could. I really he think, think that was knee jerk. Second man in. For what he did with Wisniewicz is a different story. Yeah, even that was kind of, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, who knows? You don't know what they're thinking in there. You really don't. Yeah. It's, it's happened It's happened now for the last 12, 15 years since they've had this review thing or whatever. They want. Right. Department of Player Safety. That's my biggest yeah. issue with it is their, their, their lack of consistency is basically the point right. of what yeah. we've been talking about. Is yeah. just, and I'm a Rangers fan. I'm Panarin's my favorite player. I get it. They, their lack of consistency is yeah. the issue. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There's for me, no it's easy. For me, it's easy because they have all these videos, so they can, they can just store them. Like right, you know what I mean? Right, right. They can have twelve right. different categories. You well, know, what did we do with that hit. one? Yeah. Like, and they just don't. I don't get it. It's anyway. Anyway, beating a dead horse, I guess. But, yeah. yeah it, but even still, but you know what? That's why we have shows like this because we can complain. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> listen. Right. Didn't right. you? You got to figure out what's going on in Georgie Paris's head. You played with him in Anaheim. Come on now. <laughs> He's a great guy. He really is. He's a great guy. But I think what happens when you, and I've said this too before, is when you get in that role, you know, year one, you do pretty good. You're kind of still, you remember how you, how it was when you played. Then year two, it's like, okay, now you've seen 30 videos or 60 videos. And then year three. And I just think you get, you get molded into this corporate, thing. You can't, corporate you know, like, so I don't even know if I blame it on them. It just kind of happens and there's no one there. Evidently, there's no one there to kind of reset and, and uh, you know, but it, it's happened to all of them. You know, the more they watch video, that seems like the harder it gets. And then you watch, he'll be out of there. He'll be, go he'll get out of there probably next year or the year after because he's just like, I can't be sick of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would yeah. too. They're going <laughs> to hire Marshawn as the head of player safety. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Here, here's exactly. how you sleuth with everybody. <laughs> you know, I always thought that would be a great job for a retired referee. They really would. Well, if, if you Maybe. If you think about it for a second, you know, yeah. I mean, they're the ones that have been on the ice seeing all this stuff or, you know, and I'm not talking about a guy who was a ref for like two years, yeah. you know, take a, a ref that was a, an NHL ref for say 15, 20 years. And he West McCauley. West McCauley. Yeah. Yeah. But then you'd have to take away his calls on the ice and that would just yeah, that's totally yeah. ruin everything. So <laughs> even Probably though that'd be great if he did like a video for every time he suspended somebody. <laughs> The you get is they make they make, they make too good of money, and when they're done reffing, they're like, "See you later." See you later. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Oh man! So speaking of animated and all that, so you once you were done with your playing career, you you spent a little time with the Bruins broadcast team. So how yep. much fun was that? It was. Uh, I'm going to say it was more stressful than fun. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was uh, because it, it didn't come natural to me. Um, I still have a tough time, even when I'm talking to you guys. Like, I'm more comfortable looking at one of you guys in the, in the, the computer. You know what I mean? Seeing a face and talking to it, and pretending you're actually listening to me, rather than the you know assuming the, people on TV well, are listening. <laughs> Dave's paying tough. close attention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough for me to look at this little camera up at the top and talk to it. And that was, that was something you had to do. Right. You know, you had to, whenever, whenever the bright lights went on a certain camera, you were supposed, you know, you were supposed to shift and talk to this camera. Like you're talking to whatever it is, a million people. And then if this light went on, you're supposed to shift over. And I just had a tough time. And then the other part of it was I was, you know, like I said, I was in Switzerland for three years. I didn't know that the league really got young from 2007 or 2008 to 2011 when I retired. Like there was a lot of changeover and I, I didn't know the league. I mean, I was over in Switzerland doing my thing. I wasn't, I was not following the NHL. So it, it became tough to even talk about players because that's what I had to do 
when I didn't know half the league at that point. So those two, those two things combined, like I was studying every, I was studying for like two or three hours from like say 10 to one, I'd take a pregame nap because I was exhausted from studying. <laughs> and then I'd head into the game and, and you, you, and you try to just, I don't know, the lights come on and you got to try to, I don't know. It just, it got better towards the end. And I had, I did have some fun. I wore some costumes. Um, I wore like an elf costume for Christmas and did some goofy stuff, but it was when the nights were over, when the games were over. I gotta find that picture. Yeah, you'll find yep. it if you look. Yeah. Buddy the Elf. Yep. Buddy the Elf. Everything, yeah. Everything's on everything's on YouTube. Yeah. So but having a beer after the games were over was like it was I was so because it, it really was a lot of tension and pressure to 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 perform, I guess. So it was it wasn't as fun as I thought it would be, put it that way. Yeah, because you weren't really there that long, right? I mean, then you no. you got hired by Montreal as a scout. Yeah, one year. Once once I got once the other job came calling, I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you went to the Bruins' huge rival on top of it. Uh, I know. I yeah. Know, but, yeah. <laughs> Unreal experience though, being in Montreal like that though, must have been sick. It was. It was the, uh, and I can only imagine. I mean, they, they're they're way behind us up there as far as COVID, so I don't even know what they're getting in. Four thousand fans or something, but. The atmosphere is great, and it would have been. It would have been. We had one year. We took a. We had a good little run there, but uh, where we beat the we beat the Bruins in the playoffs, which was it was pretty exciting. Um, and it would have been if we could have won a cup. I mean, obviously, it's not the same as a player, but ultimately, every day when I sit in front of the computer and I'm looking for players and writing reports and stuff, we're still trying to do the same thing, and that's to win a cup, which I haven't done yet. So, well. You're losing a pretty key piece there in Minnesota now, going back to the KHL. That's tough. Yeah, I'm not going to – we can't get into that. I was going to say we'll not get into it, but that's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully it's it's hopefully it's hopefully unofficial, you know. Well, so. speaking – because we're kind of on the topic anyway, though, since you spent some time there as a scout. How, how do you feel about Montreal right now? Well, like I said, it's uh, – on paper, like in the beginning of the year, they were really good, and, and on paper they look pretty solid. You know, their D is their D's good. If anything, they have just an experience up the middle – um, so to see him go this far without having, you know, Philip Deneau is playing like a checking role centerman type thing. They don't have, you know, they get Suzuki and Kakiniemi in the middle and that's, it's crazy that they're, that they've reached this level, but right. it's, yeah. it's good for us in Minnesota. Yeah. Cause we don't, we, you know, we don't have a number one center in Minnesota either. So it, it, it kind of gives you hope that it, you can do it. Um, sure. Cause there, there hasn't been a lot of teams. If you look, who've won the cup over the last 20 years that don't have, a number one center. So, um, but so no, I mean, like I said, you, you, you find Mojo and your goalie plays well, and it, it's been proven over the past few years that, that, that it is possible. So. Yeah. I'll tell you though, Minnesota, you guys got a potential number one in Joel or, or Joel Erickson. I almost probably hammered the pronunciation there, but that kid's really grown leaps and bounds. Obviously. Yeah, no, he has. I mean, I think we, we don't think he's probably going to be that, you know, and I, when I say number one, I mean Bergeron and Crosby right, and David right. and, you know, a, a legit guy that can – you put him out there every – you know, whenever he's out there, you get a chance to score. But he has. He has. I think at some point over the last two years, we thought he was just going to be like an unbelievable third-line center. And this year he made big steps where, you know, we're very confident that he can fill that number two spot. So uh, we do have a lot of good pieces, and, you know, hopefully uh, Kaprizov can – we can figure that out with him and, and uh, make a, make a couple of deals this summer. And we're, you know, it's, it's, a, it's not easy to win. I can tell you that much. And uh, I think Tuka Rask said that and is, is uh, cause he gets beat down out here, by the way, in Boston, that he gets killed. Oh, it's <laughs> brutal. Oh, <laughs> oh man. He, he, yeah. he, he's spot on in that, you know what, you, you can be a really good team, which Boston has been over the last eight, whatever, eight, nine years. And it's still so very hard to win. And, um, you know, I kind of felt bad for him because he he hasn't won it as a as a starting goalie, but right. he was spot on. It, it is. It's, it's it has to be the hardest trophy to win, for sure. Oh, absolutely. So. But I'll tell you, you know, you guys got a really underrated coach in Dean Evison. He's done a, mm. a hell of a job this year. He, yeah. he really has. Yeah. So, he's a, yeah. I was going to just say about him is going back to that communication thing with you know how you you have to integrate with your young, especially your young players more. He, he does a great job with it. So he, make, he mixes, you know, the intensity. He's got presence, I think, behind the bench. You know, like he's not one of these guys you look at and be like, yeah, you know, he looks like a mathematician, you know. like he, <laughs> So he's, good, he's got a good combination, and he relies on his assistants to do the power play and PK and all that, you know, some detailed stuff. And, um, you know, I have, I have a lot of faith in him to get us to the next level. 
Yeah, good deal. Because I mean, that's so I wanted to kind of touch base with that on, on the whole scouting end of it because you left Montreal and then you went to Buffalo. And I know it didn't end well in Buffalo, so we're, we don't have to rehash all that. That <laughs> doesn't ever for we're, anyone. We're, we're trying to keep the positive energy <laughs> yeah. going here, right? So, <laughs> so you're you're in Minnesota, and what when you're scouting a player, what are you really looking for? Uh, so I can tell you this, honestly, like it's gone back. I've, I've changed my mind multiple times on what I thought was important and what, I mean, regardless, you're still reporting on guys and you're, you're writing reports on what you see and what you think he's going to be. But I I've changed where the value, I guess, because, you know, we all hear how fast the game is, right? It's a fast game. If you can't skate, you know, it's going to be impossible to play or whatever. And, and Montreal is proving that wrong right now too, like, like Toffoli and Perry, they're two of their best players, right? So what do those two guys have for me? And this, this will answer your question. They have hockey sense. So they have smarts and they're, they're competitive bastards, right? Mm -hmm. So I've changed my tune a little bit. And I don't think you could have 12 forwards that are not fleet of foot, like, like Toffoli and Perry, but I certainly think you can get away with having more than I thought you could. If you asked this question to me five or six years ago. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yep. I love that you brought up the hockey sense because what you told me about Keandre Miller earlier this season was fantastic. Okay. Now, what did I, can't, now, what did I tell you exactly? Because I can go back and look if you want me to check. No, no, no. I mean, was he playing well at that time? or was No, he it was that? just starting. You said he had uh, his hockey IQ was uh, didn't rate well. Right. So in this, you could ask if you ever were to speak with a lot of amateur scouts, like going through the draft, like most of them would tell you that that was – you know, why a lot of teams would pass on this guy. Sure. And this for me, this is almost impossible for like us pro scouts to figure this out. And I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll be frank with you right now and honest that what I said, I was, I was wrong. I was dead wrong, at least up to this point, because I, you know, whoever's coaching the D there, like you have to give huge credit to that, to whoever it is, because I think, I know like hockey sense just doesn't change. Like you, you either, you, you know, some will say you can adapt to it. You can, you can uh, do these different drills on the ice to teach. And then maybe you can get a little better, better at it. But this guy, this, this guy super impressive, this Miller kid, like, cause yeah. he's a beast. He's whatever, six foot, whatever, 230, 40 pounds. And, and he has been able to, I think through coaching, I don't think he just adapted, he like figured it out all of a sudden, but he's been able to, um, I guess just play within his capabilities and not get himself in trouble with some of the mistakes that he used to make, you know, like right. instead of holding on to the puck for three seconds, now he's holding on to a second and a half and he's hitting the guy that's open, but he's made unbelievable strides. And I will admit right here and now that I was dead wrong and he's going to be, he should play in this league for 15, 18 years. Do you, do you well, think, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm going to ask another Rangers question, so no one wants to hear it. But <laughs> I do. <laughs> well, I no, do. I was going to say, as a guys. as a scout and even as a player, just to kind of piggyback off that, when you when you look at kids, right? When you look at guys, like whether it's the uh, a juniors player, a college player, somebody that you're looking about considering Minnesota to try to pick up, whatever. Is a guy like say Miller? Do you think seeing the way he plays with players that are obviously better than him at their own position, like Adam Fox, do you think mm -hmm. that is like a a scoutable thing. Like, can you tell if a guy can work well with other players that play his position? Is that something that you kind of look for? Or do you think that's something that is just a given if you're going to play at this level? Um, it's funny you say that because I don't think that we take that into account and we should. And I, and I've thought about this at the pro level where, and you, you should start your own manual because you could be the first one that does it. But at, at the pro level, you know, you trade for a guy. Say you He's trade like, write for that a guy. down, write that down. <laughs> it's the goddamn book. <laughs> but I can see a guy that I like a lot, right? And, and it, this is twofold, I guess. The guy that I like, we trade for him. He comes to Minnesota and he's horseshit, right? So I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, what the hell happened, right? But to your point, is it who he's playing with? Or is it the coach that he has? Is it the, is it the system that they're playing? Is it the coach, you know, made him feel uncomfortable when he first got there? Like, is it, you know what I mean? So for me, it's two, there's two things that we should look at more and we don't. And that, and you, and you hit it, you hit it on the head. Like, and I, and I, I keep, I bring it up from time to time, but it never really, you know, hockey's kind of a, even with scouting, it's like this thing that whatever's been going on for years, everybody kind of follows, follows, follows. And then so you get, don't fix it. You know, yeah. And if I get, but if I ever get to a higher position, I'm going to, I am going to implement some of this stuff or at least try to implement it because with all the video and all the 
we should be able to we should be able to tell that we shouldn't trade for a guy that plays for the Islanders maybe because he he plays this system and bring him to our team where yeah. we want to be more run and gun. Like it just right. you know, but it doesn't come up as much as we should. Right. So. But you know, we, Scotty, we talked about it before. Like we talked about Owen Power. Right. And you know, right. I mean, he's he's a great. Obviously, he's projected to be the number one pick in this year's draft. Mm. Again, if he's going to fit a system or fit around a player, is it going to is it going to, is it going to change? Yeah, well, that's that's the whole thing too. And I mean, and just to like finish up, I believe Miller started off as a forward, if I'm not mistaken. I could be yeah. wrong about that. I believe you're and, right. Yeah. And I think with Kendry Miller, what's really helped him is the fact that the Rangers have such a deep defensive core that he didn't have to be thrust into that spotlight right off the get go. So they were really able to kind of ease him in, and I think that really helped him tremendously. Yes you know, and no. I mean, he was playing. He was. I mean, playing. He's, playing, he's playing a lot of minutes. He don't was, get me wrong. Yeah, but yeah. But when you yeah, got part Adam of, Fox, part of that, team Truba, you know, especially when Truba got injured, is when he really. Right. You're right. He didn't. Up, but. Yeah, he didn't have to play a ton of special teams, and and that certainly helps. But um, he proved at the end he could. So I mean. He, he's uh, oh, absolutely. You know, I, absolutely. You know, I'm happy for him because he's found a way to absorb his deficiencies, and you know now it's just being able to keep doing it and not think that you're better than what you were. You know, because that'll happen too. He'll end up being like, right. oh, "This is, you know, this is easy." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> and then go out and get smoked and look like an idiot. Yeah. That seems oh, to happen geez. to goalies a lot. Yeah, like, look at Carter Hart, right? Yeah, cool. I know. but you I mean, know. Uh, you know, and and the thing is, and, and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong. It has got to be so difficult to get the right blend because if you look at it, like in a regular season, you can get away with having a team that's just fast, you know, lightning fast, mm -hmm. but not very physical. They get to the playoffs. I mean, they could have had 110 yeah. points in a regular season and they get destroyed in the first round because they can't right. play physical. Right. You it's mean, two like, seasons. Right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, getting that blend is just yeah. it, it, that's that's the nightmare right there. It's two seasons, really. I, I think it is right now. It's two seasons, one where you got to make the playoffs. But then you got to have enough. You got to have Tampa's. A, you look at what Tampa did, and I hate being like a copycat. Like you know, we got to do what Tampa did because they won the cup. But it's. I think it is reality. The problem is some teams trying to get that mix. They have too many guys that are slow and heavy or whatever, and they don't. Then they miss the playoffs. So like it's like right. you got to have. You got to be able to get in, and then have the heavy bodies and that grit and that toughness to to be able to make a run at it. So it's once again, like I said, it's just not easy. It's just not easy. Yeah, because Tampa couldn't win until they did it. Right, they added those two pieces oh. and gave up gave up first round picks and everything else, and it, it, it worked. Which so is probably going to cost the them Rangers. down the road, but that's okay. <laughs> you, you do what you got to do to win those that's cups, right. right? That's right. They, they took the Rangers away from the Rangers, so <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be bitter, Jeremy. Come on, <laughs> it's the Rangers of the it's the it's the Rangers of the South. I just it's Rangers. Rangers. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, so we're going to have to go to a commercial break here uh, real quick. Um, Mark, do you want to stick around for the rest of the show? Just get through the other segments real quick here? Or yeah, you know you what? Let's, uh, I'll come back and we'll, we'll we'll have to wrap it up quick. My wife's about to kill me. She's hungry. She wants to get out for dinner. So. <laughs> well, actually, like I said, we're going to we're going to go to commercial break anyway. So um, what we'll do, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. I'll arrange to have Mark Coterry come on and I'll have you come on at the same time. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Not. Listen, any any time if you get um, you know if, if you want one of these other guys to get replaced, then I, I can jump on for them too. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but, uh, no. I, I don't want to... cold. It, w it won't be the little <laughs> things anymore. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no I'm just no, kidding. I'm good. just kidding. But uh, honestly, anytime uh, I love talking about it, even if it's not on on the podcast. Like any question, I love. I, I do enjoy talking hockey, and believe or not when you're a scout i mean you're by yourself a ton you really don't even have a lot of people to talk to because you even if you talk to the other scouts you don't want to tell them anything because it's all you know stuff you want to keep from right yourself. right, right. Um, so yeah i'm always <laughs> always available always available. well you you got our number pal so you're welcome to call or text anytime sounds good yeah, like I thanks said, for having me appreciate it more than happy to have you back thanks, on so mark. mark it was awesome talking again man all right thank see you, guys you so much i really appreciate it all right that was mark mowers that was that was great that was awesome so much fun <laughs> and i and i love <laughs> they, i love how he just did not pull any punches it's great you know no that, those, no well yeah. there's a video on uh when he was on ness and i think going off on avery i suggest you go check it out it's on youtube <laughs> oh i gotta check that out now that's awesome that's awesome <laughs> oh so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our commercial break and we're going to end the segment like we always do with our breakaway trivia question so this week 
Breakaway trivia question is, and Gumper's not here to get it wrong. And Dave, put your phone down. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, who is the current active leader in NHL all-time points scored? The answer when we come back. Visit My Little Falls and stay connected with the latest news information and events in the city. Our mission is to generate interest in the community and connect residents in a more meaningful way by facilitating deeper conversations about how these stories will shape the future of Little Falls, New York. Join thousands of weekly visitors who stay up to date with feature stories, interviews, videos, and our events calendar. It's about timely local news for the community keeping citizens informed about important issues, telling stories about the people who live and work here, and giving locally owned businesses the opportunity to reach a very targeted audience of local residents and tourists alike. It's a whole new form of media-rich content developed specifically for today's mobile lifestyle and listeners. You can download our iOS app in the iTunes store or sign up for our weekly newsletter. Stop by today at mylittlefalls.com. You'll be glad you did. And we're back with more Marty's Illegal Stick. So I'm going to give you guys the breakaway trivia question one more time, just to let it percolate. And the question is, who is the current active leader in NHL all-time points scored? Jeremy, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to go with the beard. Jumbo Joe Thornton. All right. Dom? Oof, that's a good one. I... I don't. I have no idea. So I'm going to go ahead and throw out a give me answer. I'm just going to say Sid. I don't know. <laughs> Dave, did you get the answer on your phone? No, I did not. I did not. <laughs> okay. Did not cheat. Do you have a guess? No. Okay. I didn't think so. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> Jeremy is correct. Oof. It is the beer Jumbo Joe Thornton. He's got a thousand five hundred twenty nine points. And Dom, if Joe does decide to retire, you would be correct because Sidney Crosby's next. So you're both sort of right. So I am a know. I am a Sidney Crosby believer. I do not buy into all the hate. You're you know, a Ranger I, fan, so you've got to buy into the hate. No, <laughs> I I gotta tell you, I used to hate him. I really did, but I've I've grown to respect him. Yeah, he's so, he's grown up a lot over the years. That's, he has, he has. But you know, he does the one thing that all the all the great players do, and that he makes everybody around him better. Yeah. I mean, if you notice, the Penguins could put one of us on his line and we would get 15 goals. Probably. <laughs> Seriously. You know, but that's, you know, I'm, uh, like, yeah, you, you can't help but respect the guy. But I do want to let everybody know that that breakaway trivia answer was brought to you by friend of the show, Jimmy Iceman McNeil's book, The Red and White Zamboni Ice Machine. If you would like to order a copy, you can email Jimmy at Mac underscore Iceman at hotmail.com. And Jeremy, I still have your copy. We'll have to play hockey again sometime soon. I'm, so I can get you your copy. I'm on the ice tonight, tomorrow, possibly on Saturdays. I'm all over. Well, I'm not this week. So <laughs> <laughs> I've got warm weather and beer to enjoy. Sorry. Hey, th we, we drink in the parking lot before we go out. We drink in the arena when we play, and then we drink when we go back out. Yeah, but you forget, I got a 40 minute drive back. <laughs> hey, you know who does play is um, Derek. Really? Yeah. So I mean, he's got a he's got a far drive. Eh, well, maybe I'll hit a ride with him sometime. And there's a guy that comes down from Ogdensburg. Woo! Wow. Yeah. yeah now that's know. a ride. I don't, I don't know why. I really don't know why. I would not. I, do that. I do not know either. Wow. Okay. Well, with that said, uh, on with hot takes. Rest in peace, Tom Curvers and Rene Robert. Uh, Curvers was a defenseman for seven different NHL teams from 1984 to 1995. He was 58 at the time of his passing. Uh, Robert was on the famed French Connection line in the 1970s for the Buffalo Sabres with Gilbert Perrault and Rick Martin. He was 72 years old. Sad loss for hockey, really. Uh, Kerbers, I was going to ask Mark about it, and I just I didn't get to this part. Uh, he was an assistant GM for the Wild. Um, and, of course, you know, Rene Robert, I mean, that, that line was just insane back in the day. Mm -hmm. You know, but... Not to uh, not to bum anyone else out. It's also today, ten years since uh, we lost the boogeyman. Ah, Derek oh wow, Bugard. that's right. Yeah. You're right. One of my all time faves. So yeah, yeah, like, he was awesome. God, was it, hate to be on the wrong side of that guy. Jesus oh. Christ, <laughs> throwing oh. cinder oh. blocks, no. at you. Thank throwing you. frying pans <laughs> out of his wrist. Oh my God, what a killer! 
<laughs> man, Lord. oh man! And you know what? The, you know what the sad thing is about that? Like I, I watched a documentary on him. He didn't. He didn't like the fight. No, he hated it. He absolutely hated it. Yeah, you know, he didn't want to be the. He didn't want to be the enforcer role, but he fell into that because of his size, and he yeah. he did not like it. He didn't like it. You know, it's it's funny you say that because I think a lot of enforcers will tell you that. Yeah. The, the, the reason they got to the NHL was because somebody had to take that role and they, they took it just to, you know, be in the league. But mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. I mean, a lot of them don't really, you know, come out of high school thinking, oh, you know what? I want to be the enforcer. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, I mean, Dale, Dale said that. Dale said, yeah. you know, I mean, he was good at it, sure. But I mean, these guys, like, you watch them, some of these guys all of a sudden they take boxing lessons and kickboxing, boxing lessons. And it's all because of what? Like, they're not out there to, score goals like that's what you're playing hockey for well if they're but, taking kickboxing lessons with skates on yeah yeah well i think that takes to a whole new level jeremy that's that's just <laughs> doing for balancing and stuff like that but i mean you know i mean these guys are just Jeez. they're human yeah what, what is it, somebody gonna sign steven seagal next is that what? that would be pretty sick yeah <laughs> yeah oh that's great <laughs> all right well moving right along <laughs> so I got to tell you guys, I was watching uh, sled hockey on TV Ooh. the other day, and I am going to tell you something. It was a uh, world championships. Uh, USA was destroying. I think it was South Korea or something like that. But I'm going to tell you something. I have a whole new level of respect for those athletes, both the, the men and the women sled hockey. And that's incredible. The incredible amount of upper body strength it must take to do that. You ever watch that? I mean, that's yeah. it's crazy. That's, it is. I mean, it, it was just insane just being just the way they, they move around the ice. Because for anybody who hasn't seen it, they actually have two sticks that are like almost like sawed in half or even down to a quarter. And it's like they're like a ski. Right. So they're using it to push along the ice. And then when they get to the puck, they, they just snap. It's just a little snap. And yeah, I mean, it, they're, they're, the shots are incredible. And the mobility alone. I mean, I just I, I, to me, it's unbelievable. It, it really is. And I would actually love to see like the the like a like a traveling like uh, exhibition or something like that, because I would love to go to one of those games live. You know what they call you know somebody who has two sticks like that? Crutches. He's on crutches. Yeah, man. <laughs> if I had two sticks like that, I'd be on crutches. <laughs> if you got a ice, you would be on crutches. What are you talking about? I bust my ass is what I'd be. That's what I mean. That's why deck hockey's looking real good. You, you wait till oh, tomorrow man. and you're in goal, pal. <laughs> oh boy. Oh my goodness! But yeah, I mean that's that it is. It, it's absolutely incredible, and uh, you know, like I said, hats off because it, it really is great. Um, NHL playoffs recap, guys. So um, we'll start with the Vegas Montreal series uh, last night. Ooh. Man, Montreal just laid the wood to Vegas, didn't they? Sure did. In Vegas, too. Sure did. In Vegas, and you know, I think. I think that uh, bulletin board talk that Stone sent out has really lit a charge under Montreal. Yeah. It, did yeah, you, I yeah. Mean, you, did, you did see what he said, right? He said, you know, it's just like an AHL team. We'll just sweep them in four games. It's like, or no, we're playing like we're playing an AHL team. Wow. I'm like, okay, so you called your shot, and now you better back it up because all of a sudden <laughs> now they're not. They're, they're one game away from being packing. Pretty much. And, and they're going to Montreal. So, I mean, it's... With an know. entire nation behind them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no kidding. There, there are going to be no more kidding. fans outside of that arena than there will no be inside. No kidding. That place, it's going to be crazy outside that arena. Oh. It's a... Uh, the next time we get a chance, I, it, it didn't come up, but the next time you get a chance to talk to Mark, he, he said that one of the weirdest places he ever played was in Montreal. It's just intimidating. Oh, I it's, it's like Mardi Gras. You go out there yeah. for a Toronto-Montreal game, it's literally the streets are shut down at like twelve noon. Oh yeah. And oh, there's there's no doubt. Party everywhere. But you know, it's, well, it's good funny luck, with, Vegas. It's funny with my, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You got a taste of their own medicine, right? <laughs> you know, it's funny with Montreal though because I mean, for years, I mean, they, the Canadians got maligned for giving Carey Price the contract that they did. Mm-hmm. And yeah. a lot of people will say, "Oh, there's no way a goaltender should be getting paid that kind of money." But you know what? These are the kind of times is the reason you do it. Exactly. Yeah. If, if you exactly. have a franchise goalie like that, I, for the life of me, don't understand why the, what the big deal is about paying him. If you think that's your guy, I mean, and he's going to stabilize the most important position on the ice, really, what's the big deal? I mean, Pay him $10 million if, a year. If that's, if that's what you're going to do. But, I mean, if you got somebody like, look at the Rangers. 
they had Lundqvist. But then you had the two backups that came in that were studs. So, I mean, you, you kind of had to bite the bullet on that one. Yeah, Montreal that's a little bit different. Montreal doesn't have a back have backups like that. But that's so a little bit Jake different. Allen back there now? Jake yeah. Allen, yeah. But Lundqvist was towards the end of his career when Georgiev and, and Shesterkin were coming in. Well, Allen's probably got to be the best backup they've had for Price in a long time. No, long I mean, time. He, he was great long behind uh, Bennington and St. Louis. Yeah, absolutely. He's got the experience. And the thing, too, that's crazy about Price is you brought it up. I, I was talking to uh, I'm buddies with Scott Matley's from Locked On Canadians, mm-hmm. and he says he, Canadians fans are not. They've been calling for Price's hat all season. Now, all of a yeah. sudden, he's got him a game away from moving on to the cup. And it, it's crazy how that works out. You know what I mean? We're talking about the last time a Canadian team's won a cup. It's been what? 28 Ever. years. It's been since <laughs> the year Montreal. I was born. Montreal. 93. 93. Montreal. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if there's one team that's going to slay the dragon, that's probably going to be Tampa. Let's let's do it, man. I'm all on board. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No disrespect to the Isles. I know we're about to bu- drop the buck in about nine minutes here, but. Oof. Well, you I, know. Uh, you know. Speaking of you this, see, like, did, did you see that save that Polak that had? That was crazy. Oh, I my. mean, you can't. I watched that over and over and over again. And I'm going, I'm thinking, you know, that puck hit his stick and it bounced up. If, yeah. if, if, yeah. if that play happened 10 more times, that puck's yeah. going between his legs. You know like what? He's not stopping it. All I could think of watching that was Varlamov had best bought him the biggest steak dinner oh. ever in the world after that game. Oh. Because you want to talk about somebody who just completely bit on a fake? Bit. I mean, oh, he was he was on God. the bench. He was in the shower. <laughs> yeah. He was almost at the blue lines. Like, I was going to say, <laughs> he was up in the concourse getting yeah. a beer and popcorn. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I mean, oh, he got was brutal. I mean, he just got burnt, and I'm like, "Going, where are you going? Where are you going?" And then the shot happened. I'm like, "How did? Did we really just see that?" Yeah. No, I mean, I was in Buffalo, sitting next to Heenan and like all all the guys, and they're all of a sudden like they just started screaming. We're like, "Did you just see that? Like, that's incredible!" And Heenan goes, "That'll never happen again." No, that, no, that'll, no, that'll never yeah, happen again. I think you're absolutely right. And if that happened ten times, nine of the times it ends up in the back of the net. Oh yeah, absolutely, uh, yeah, absolutely. unreal. But what do we think, guys, after the shellac in the Islanders took in game five? You think they, they rebound tonight? Yeah. Trotsky lights a fire under those guys. Yeah. There's no you way. Gotta, you gotta I think, think it's gonna this, go seven. This could, be, this could be the last game played in in the Coliseum. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, uh, they're not gonna they don't want to do that. They yeah, don't want to. Yeah, you want to talk about an atmosphere that's gonna be out of control tonight? <laughs> I mean, my the sad note is, is that I sh- I could be there right now. Ugh. But instead, cousin, you chose to be with us. Well, oh, nice. I, I had a I had a little family thing that I had to do with my mom today. So, oh, um, is that what it was? Oh. But my cousin, see, I, thought, uh, I thought you just wanted to be with us. Yeah. I mean, I have tickets. I mean, if the if the Islanders go, I still have five tickets to use. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. So, I, I mean, I'm hoping that you know. I hope they make it. Yeah. Wow, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't that be an experience though? If the Isles go the last year of the Coliseum, oh my god! Oh man, that would be awesome. Oh. And, and Montreal, and Montreal yeah. goes like the stars have just aligned. For yeah, all right. Yeah. Be, oh my god, that would be so awesome. Oh man, hockey gods would be really confused there for a minute. <laughs> but you know who would really be bent out of shape? I bet is the NHL league offices because you know they're just clamoring for Tampa Bay versus Vegas. Oh yeah, you oh, know yeah. that. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> The two Absolutely. Cadillac teams of the league, you know they want them in the final. Yeah. <laughs> and then here come the Islanders and Canadians just to skunk <laughs> everything. <This> ragtag <laughs> group of fourth line grinders on both teams. Oh, my God. Corey Perry. Yeah. yeah. Still doing it. Contributing with a bunch of college kids in Montreal. Yeah. Yep. Cole Caulfield's the most important player on the team right now besides Carey Price. Guy's out of his mind. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You know, right now Gary Bettman's like, remember the remember the GI Joe cartoon when Cobra Commander had his his <laughs> plans foiled at the end. You know he's just flipping out, right? Yeah. Like, oh my god! Oh, oh man, man, that would be something. God, That'd I'd love great. to see Tampa lose. That would be great. <laughs> I, yeah. Can you imagine? I don't care who it does it. Honestly, this round or next, just end it. I'm sick of this. Oh, oh goodness gracious. Well, that's all I got for this segment, actually. So um, we're going to do another commercial break. But before we do, we want to give you your website of the week. Website of the week is brought to you by 315hockey.com. 315hockey.com is your news hub for all levels of hockey in central New York. This week's website of the week is puckslinepod.com. This is a link to the Puck Lines podcast, which is a Bruins-centered podcast for all you Bruins fans out there. And just as a cheap plug, I will be their guest on Friday night to talk about some potential L.A. Kings, Boston Bruins trades. So I wanted to throw that out there. Thank you very much. Blah, 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 blah. (laughs) 
Yes, I know you're still entertained by that, Jeremy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so we're going to take our last commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to take a ride on that Zamboni time machine. We'll be right back. Need to find that gift for someone special? Visit Little Falls Presents at the Stone Mill and Canal Place. Stop by today to find unique artist work, T-shirts, coffee cups, gift towels, greeting cards, tote bags, koozies, and original oil paintings and prints. It's all about the art of the gift. For more information, visit mylittlefalls.com slash shop or call 315-508-5310 for details. And we're back for segment three of Marty's Illegal Stick, the Zamboni Time Machine. The Zamboni Time Machine is brought to you by Zamboni.com, and the Zamboni name is used with permission from the Zamboni Company. This week, the Zamboni Time Machine takes us back to 1930 in the debut of Jean Pusey, the original clown prince of hockey. Baseball has Max Pacton and Bob Euchre, and basketball has the Harlem Globetrotters to bring the laughs. And hockey at one time had Jean Pusey for comic relief. I got to be careful how I say that. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's the little things. Scott. Yes, that's right. <laughs> to say it was a defenseman who dreamed of playing for the. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> bum, ba, da, bum, ba. <laughs> Anyways, to say it was a defenseman who dreamed of playing for the Montreal Canadiens. He had heart, but actual hockey talent was an issue. He actually got a tryout with the Canadiens in 1930 and was sent to their minor league team in London, Ontario. It was there that the legend of Jean Pousset began. In his first game in London, Pousset fired a puck so hard that even though the goalie made the save with his glove, the glove went flying off his hand and into the goal, with the puck still in it. Pousset then grabbed the glove out of the net, gave it back to the goalie, all while giving him a bow. He wasn't done yet, though, as he then grabbed the goalie's bare hand, raised it up, and pointed to the bewildered goaltender's fingers, yelling, De all there, you are lucky. And a legend was born. Yes, how's that for an accent, huh? <laughs> Get ready, there's more. <laughs> Pusey managed to somehow get awarded several penalty shots throughout his career. One night after drawing his first, he stood at center ice and combed his hair. He then skated in on the goalie, but instead of shooting, he came to a complete stop, took off his glove, and shook the goalie's hand. He then skated back to center ice, came back down, and took his shot, which, of course, he missed. Still another time, he was issued a major and misconduct penalty. He decided he did not want to stay in the penalty box. He got up and left, and the referee, realizing he was not in the box, stopped the game and a search party was organized. Pusey was found <laughs> walking around the halls of the arena. When asked why he did it, Pusey re- replied in his heavy French-Canadian accent, What's the fuss? Over a little thing like we're taking a walk? The penalty box. It was too hard. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know if I'm laughing, I don't know if I'm laughing at you or at the actual story anymore. I don't know. <laughs> well, if it makes you feel better, Jerry, Pusey did eventually play in the NHL, skating for three teams, including winning a Stanley Cup with his beloved Canadians. In the offseason, he was a professional wrestler, and his antics in the squared circle would get him inducted into the Slam Wrestling Canadian Hall of Fame. And that, my friends, concludes this week's trip on the Zamboni Time Machine. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> my my accent's off. I can't help yeah. it. You, know? you were and, fine. You were yeah. You yeah. Were fine. And and I actually have French Canadian blood in my my ancestry. Well, my, ancestry be, yeah. my ancestry <laughs> be so she right now. What? I missed it. <laughs> he said that, that explains, explains a, lot. a lot. Well, it does actually. Uh, You're right. <laughs> all right. Oh, oh well, guys, no! Uh, I love the neighbors to the north. I'm a fan. Don't worry. That's yep, right. So my gotta love them. So my it was weird. We, like I said, I went out to Buffalo this weekend and. You know, went went out to Niagara Falls and checked everything out. It was weird looking at the Rainbow Bridge being like completely closed. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like I'm I'm looking across the river and I see everybody over there and I'm going, I just want to go visit. I just can I just, <laughs> just, just want to say hi and get some food? Yeah, that's all I want. You know, that's all I want. <laughs> oh well, there's our closing music. So, guys, thanks for coming on, Dom. Appreciate your pinch in, and uh, you're gonna have to do this again sometime real soon. Olay, olay, olay. Yeah, yes. I'm in anytime. Olay. That's right. I'm in anytime. It's a pleasure. Thank you, pal. So next week, our guest is Kevin Shea. He was the co-author of Derek Sanderson's autobiography, Crossing the Line. And we want to let you know that you can find us at Marty's Illegal Stick.com, MyLittleFalls.com, on Facebook and Twitter at Marty's Illegal Stick Hockey Podcast, and all major podcast platforms under My Little Falls. New episodes debut every Thursday night. So for our friend Don Real, for Jeremy Roberts, for Dave the Save Warner, and of course for Mark Mowers, thank you for coming on. 
I'm Scott Kimball. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. Go Rangers. Ha, ha, ha.